Hello everyone, my name is Frank Levax. I'm Innovation Content Leader at JEC Group. Welcome to the latest JEC podcast interview. Our guest today is Robert Stevenson. Robert is President and CEO of Eastman Machine Company. He is the fourth generation owner of this 130 plus years old American company. Old but agile, which helped Eastman to go through several global crises. Robert is accompanied by his son, Trevor Stevenson, Vice President of Eastman for Technical Answers. Robert, Trevor, welcome to Jack Podcast Interview. It's great to have you with us. It's great to be here, Frank. Thank you for having us. So, Robert and uh, Trevor, please introduce yourself briefly. You said, Frank, I am the fourth generation. I am uh, happy to be in, in this situation. I've been working at Eastman actually since I was 16. So that is almost 53 years old. My own education, though, I was a graduate of Yale University. When I started at Eastman, my father put me into the technical side of the business to learn the machines. At that time, of course, back in the early 70s, uh, automation was just starting. Uh, and we were primarily a machine uh, manufacturer of manual cutting machines, uh, which we still manufacture. Yeah. So uh, talking about you, your company, what are your markets and solution, and what industries uh, do you customer typically hail from? Our markets are very diverse, which has uh, increased over time. When I started working with my father back in 1973 full time, he would have said we are a cloth cutting manufacturer, we manufacture cloth cutting machines. Today, with, we still manufacture manual machinery, but we also manufacture a wide range of automated equipment, material handling, cutting, uh, rewind equipment, et cetera, et cetera. And so we've increased the diversity of our markets. Uh, I, I like to tell new employees, they sometimes ask, what, what do you make here? What do you do? And I say, I don't think there's a day that goes by that you haven't worn, sat on, ridden in, flown in, boated on, recreated on a product that maybe potentially has been cut or handled by one of our machines. So a really, really big spectrum of... Uh application sectors. Uh, what uh, material types are predominantly cut on your cutting uh, systems? Uh, in, we basically look at ourselves as now cutting flexible fabrics, but in, but in terms of uh, JEC interests, we cut aramid, we cut dry and wet prepregs, we cut fiberglass, uh, all sorts of synthetic, synthetic materials that are used as, as reinforcements uh, for the final products. You know, to go back to our markets, it's interesting that as, as a basically not a large company, we, we feel we're a, a, a mid-sized company, mm -hmm. that, our, that our global reach and, and our marketing has been such that if you look at, for example, in the Fortune 500 defense industries, that we sell to 50% of those companies. And globally, in Fortune 500 companies, we, we actually sell to 20% of those. But we also sell to many small manufacturers as well. For example, in the United States, uh, we sell to some very almost mom and pop, uh, what I call mom and pop, with other words, there are very, very few employees, mm -hmm. uh, industries. Uh, in Europe, for example, we sell to a, a, a small ski company in Sweden. And we also sell to one of the largest wind manufacturers in the world and that's located in, in Denmark. So as you can see, our, our, our reach across markets is, is tremendous. And uh, we feel very fortunate to have the capability and, as you said earlier, the agility mm. to service these various markets. Yeah. And uh, so you, you mentioned few uh, countries uh, outside uh, the U.S. What is your global footprint and uh, how long has Eastman had one? Well, it's, it's interesting. My grandfather took over the business as a very young man from his father. Back in, uh, his father died, at, my great-grandfather died at a very young age in 1905. And my grandfather, at the age of 20, in 1906, took over the company. And we have been exporting uh, from Buffalo, New York, since that time. Oh. Matter of fact, we have records that go back to the early 1900s, or we're selling into South America. Mm -hmm. One of our earliest representatives was in Argentina. We've had a long association uh, with uh, business in France, as, as a matter of fact, and that goes back to uh, pre-World War I that oh. we've been selling. Yeah. Uh, in, in the 1980s, we were one of the first American companies to successfully uh, set up and sell machinery into China. 
uh, which we now have a plant in Nimbo, China. We have a sales office in Hong Kong. And so the Asian market has always been very important to us. Uh, we've had uh, coal factories at one point in England. Uh, we've also had some manufacturing in Japan back in the 1950s and 1960s. Uh, we are present almost, uh, as my grandfather used to say when I was a young man, he said, there's not a country in the world that doesn't have in, in its boundaries an Eastman machine. <laughs> and I'm pleased to say that today is, it's still true, that we are uh, global in reach, mm -hmm. uh, though small in stature. Uh, we, we, are, we are everywhere. Good. Quite impressive for such a medium company. Congratulations. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, and uh, so I have an, an additional question, a uh, more sensitive one, but uh, everyone uh, went through. Uh, what has been the impact of COVID on Eastman? And uh, was it different from one sector to another? Back in almost to the date, almost to the date, I gathered our employees together when uh, the Americas, <clears throat> United States began to shut down. And in New York State, our governor told us that we had to restrict workers to 25% of our capacity. We fortunately, uh, because of our products uh, that could be used to manufacture uh, PPE uh, garments, face shields, face masks, et cetera, that we were deemed an essential industry. And we were able to uh, successfully convert many of our customers' production uh, methods into cutting uh, these types of materials. So we, were, we felt we were uh, vital in, in that aspect. Mm. For my own employees, which is more important, I gathered them together and said, look, we've, we've been through in the 130 years of our history, we've been through Great Depressions, we've been through World Wars, we've been through recessions, we will get through this. And one of the most important things I told my employees that unfortunately, uh, some of them may have to be laid off because of the reduction in demand, but due to the health aspects of COVID, we would take care of the health insurance and we would make sure that our employees are taken care of. Uh, by end of May, we were back at full employment and we've been at such ever since. Oh, we good. did notice, obviously, that in the months of March, April, and May, there was obviously a, we had about a 25% reduction in, in, uh, in sales. Mm -hmm. We have since uh, totally recovered, and we are looking at a fourth quarter, and the beginning of the first quarter of this year is actually having a, a record uh, bookings and, and, and revenues. So we're very excited to see that the economy is bouncing back very strongly and that people are willing to invest and, and spend money. I, I jokingly say nobody buys one of our machines because they want to look at it day in and day out. <laughs> uh, they buy the machine because they need to produce product yeah. and that product is being used. Thank you, Robert, for this uh, really positive signal. Uh, let's focus now on two other topics, innovation and sustainability. These are the two hot topics in the composite industry, according to the Jack 2020 industry survey. So let's focus on this now. Robert, I think innovation is in its man DNA as 80% of your products didn't exist 20 years ago. As one of the oldest manufacturing companies in Buffalo, New York, what can you attest your success and longevity to? I think one of the main reasons we are successful is that we are very customer focused and we are very committed to meeting the customer's needs. Mm -hmm. as, as a smaller company with not uh, a lot of bureaucracy, uh, we are very horizontal in our, in our organization. Mm -hmm. uh, we can respond very quickly to the customer's needs and demands. And we uh, prefer to say that we don't really sell machines, we sell solutions. Uh, to, to problems. Uh, we have been confronted many times with how do you how do we cut this? How do we manufacture this product? How do we not only put the material into a position to be cut, but once it's cut, how do we um, handle it? So we have gone from uh, using very manual systems to very automated systems. Uh, we've uh, innovated with the way we handle material uh, to get it onto a cutting bed and uh, to getting it off the cutting bed. Mm -hmm. uh, my son will talk more to this, but we're also uh, working with some robotic manufacturers and to have complete systems where everything is, is, is automated. We feel innovations has been in our blood as long as we've been in business. Uh, we've always been 
as a manufacturer, going back to the to my grandfather's days, my father's days, really first in, in producing uh, new devices with our cutting machines. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have in our in our catalog probably 150 different types of cutting from very small manual machines to very sophisticated uh, automated systems. Mm-hmm. One of the, one of the things we were proud of years ago was a manufacturer of SGP said, "How do we?" We want to take the SGP out of an oven. We want to cut it continuously. And can you come up with a system to to do that? And we worked uh, very hard, and we we got it done. A wind manufacturer said we have an issue with cutting our wet prepreg. Uh, it tends to uh, pl- plug the holes on the on on our conveyor system. How do we get around that? We developed a, a bristle uh, type conveyor belt. So we were always uh, been able to. Uh, to look at the, the the issues, and I'm very fortunate to have a great engineering staff, and I'll have my son talk more about this because, as I've told him, as he's now been with us 17 years, that the future lies in, in what he sees and what he can uh, understand what the market will be uh, in the future. And we've always looked to that. We've always listened to our customers, and that's why it's important for us when we attend trade shows, just as JEC, that it's not, it, it's not so much as important that we are there to show our stuff, but more importantly, to listen to the customers that come by our, our stand and booth say, what are you going to be doing? What do you need in the future? How can we make uh, your factory more efficient? Uh, and I think being open to that is, is a key to success and being able to develop it and produce it very quickly is, is also a hallmark of our success. Mm. Yes, you, you want to find solutions in partnerships with uh, other company, but also with your customer. We we feel always it's it's it sounds like a bromide, but we also tell our customers when you purchase one of our machines, you're not just a customer; you become a partner. And as we continue to develop new ideas or develop better software solutions for this for the industry, we are very willing to share it with existing customers. Uh, we purposely developed our, for example, our software that runs our machines and our platforms to be open architecture Mm -hmm. in the sense that we can communicate with other machines in their factories that uh, we don't want to be uh, shown as a customer, as a a producer that says, you have to only buy our machines, you can only use our things, uh, but with us you can use any type of nesting program, uh, any type of uh, PLC uh, type of situation. And that is what we want to do in terms of in terms of sustainability. We want to make our customers uh, leaner, more efficient, and uh, create less waste. And in in the future, hopefully, understand that while you always need people to to do the business, we want to make sure that we can automate where practical, and uh, and yet still provide equipment where automation is is not possible to be able to use our machines to complete tasks in that manner. Uh, so Trevor, please introduce yourself briefly. Uh, my name is Trevor Stevenson. I am the fifth generation of family business here at Eastman Machine Company. I've been here for 17 years. I started out as a technician in the technical department installing the, our automated machines mm-hmm. uh, around the world. Uh, I am now currently the vice president. What is the project or equipment you're the most proud of? Six years ago, one of the largest onshore wind blade manufacturers contacted us to implement a turnkey solution for feeding their material, cutting their material, and then rewinding their material so that it can go into the molds more efficiently. Mm -hmm. Not only did we succeed at implementing this design, they have adopted it and have put it all over their factories uh, in the entire world. Good. And rewinding is not easy at all. I know that. Trevor, can you tell me what does differentiate Eastman from its rivals? There are many things that uh, differentiate us from our rivals. One is our history, 133 years of experience. Um, we also have a extremely fast and mobile response team that we're very proud of. Uh, as my father had spoken, we're very customer-centric. Customers are our most important. So we make sure that we react to their issues and provide solutions as quickly as possible. We already uh, 
talk briefly about this uh, topic with your father, but I, I want to focus back on sustainability. Um, so what is uh, Eastman input uh, about these topics and how do you help your customers to reduce their footprint? So to reduce our carbon footprint, you know, here at the factory, uh, you know, we, we've done a lot with recycling, uh, looking at uh, smart buildings and putting in the right windows to reduce heat and, uh, and, and contain the uh, coal for air conditioning. And then for our customers, we have high efficiency motors and variable frequency drives for the systems. So that is only using the power needed, uh, which keeps the power consumption extremely low. We also, we also are making machines uh, and using the software to design files so that your material waste is very minimal when cutting. Mm. Yeah, good nesting software is a really a key for that. Of course. Yeah. And we offer, yeah, we offer very good nesting software. So, Robert, uh, let's talk about another topic. It's man recently announced uh, an expansion of a factory upgrade, with a factory upgrade. Uh, can you say more about this and uh, what has been motivated it? And uh, do you also seek for external growth? We are seeing external growth. Uh, we are seeing demand for our products. As a matter of fact, this is actually our eighth expansion to our site. The original factory where we are located in Buffalo was built in 1902 at 30,000 square feet. We are now at 140,000 square feet of manufacturing space. We will be adding an additional 20,000 square feet, mm. uh, some of which will be used as a demonstration center and others will be used to expand our capabilities on our factory floor for the increased demand for our product. Uh, with your new demonstration facility, how many machines do you expect your customers and prospects to be able to see and interact with? And uh, I'm curious to know if uh, your visitors will be able to bring their own materials because it's what I would like to, to do if I visit uh, such a facility. We would be able to show our complete line of material handling, mm -hmm. material uh, roll-up machines, uh, spreading machines, and cutters from low-ply, single-ply, multi-ply machines. And we certainly want our customers to bring their material to us, to have, in a sense, a hands-on uh, situation where they can mimic their production needs and see it in real time. Currently, we, we do this on a smaller scale, and we offer virtual uh, demonstrations, and we also do uh, currently have factory visitations. But this will enable us to expand the range of product that we can show so they can have a complete experience in, in basically a production setting. So, uh, Trevor, maybe uh, to conclude on the technical aspect, um, do, you, do you have something new for 2021 in terms of products or services? We're always innovating. Uh, it's one of the uh, backbones of our company culture is to always innovate. We're very sales-driven, customer-driven. So we're listening to our customers' input at all times to see what they want. But we're also taking ideas from what we get from trade shows and from industry news and one of the big things that is coming up is the uh, reintroduction of sealing while cutting. Uh, this has been around for a while, but it's becoming more popular um, with a lot of different industries. And uh, we will be introducing a uh, low watt laser mm -hmm. this year um, to be able to cut and seal a plethora of different materials. You can cut different type of materials. I don't know, maybe if, if we have an NCF we, uh, with different kind of fibers. You, you can cut, uh, cut it easily with your new laser? Everything from uh, uh, cotton-type fabrics to also uh, composites and some prepregs. Good. Impressive. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you, Robert. That was very interesting knowing your company in a better way. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in flesh uh, in Paris. Thank uh, you, Frank. We uh, appreciate the time that we had with you today. And we, too, miss Paris and cannot wait till we get over there again. Likewise, Frank, we look forward to re-engaging with you, hopefully in the future at JEC. And also, uh, this we'll see you virtually in a few months. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome to join us in, in Paris, indeed. And uh, in the meantime, uh, Jack Connect is due to, to go ahead at uh, the beginning of June online. For more information, please visit jackcomposites.com. 
We are looking forward to seeing you there and to continuing our mission of innovation, networking, and knowledge with you. Bye-bye.